Hello everyone. Good evening. How are you? Once again, we are back with an another session of the India Spark live talk show. And today topic would be on future of entrepreneurship and innovation hubs. This is Rupa Tanti, the founder of India Spark. So India Spark is a platform connecting students and the young professionals with the global industry leaders across different sectors to empower and develop the workforce ecosystem in India. So it's happy to announce you that we had a wide academic outreach of 1500 plus colleges within 20 plus states and 2500 plus schools across India. So today, and one more announcement to the participants I would like to say before, uh, you know, going with the speaker's introduction. Uh, all the participants, please fill in your Google Forms, which are there in our official LinkedIn India Spark page for the valuable feedback. And also, if you would like to have the e-certifications for this session, kindly enter your correct name and surname. Okay, so let's go to the show now. And today we have with us the eminent speaker for the session is Ms. Monica Mehta, who is the Executive Vice President of Wadwani Foundation. We welcome you to the session, Ms. Monica. Thank you, Rupa. Thank you for those kind words. Really nice to be here, everyone. Um, I'm excited to be here and um, I'm excited with the kind of work that India Spark is doing and engaging students, not only in the large metro cities, but also in tier two, tier three, tier four cities. Uh, my hope is that I can give you all some information on the work we do at National Entrepreneurship Network at Vatvani Foundation. Uh, but also I'm hoping that I can, you know, help you guys engage more and learn more about entrepreneurship and innovation the way we understand it. Um, so let's have an engaging session. I'm happy to go back and forth. If you have any questions, stop me by all means. Ask me questions if you want in between. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to answer them. So should we start, Rupa, or...? Yeah, uh, first, let me give you an introduction. Just uh, two minutes one. Yeah. So Monica leads the Wadwani Entrepreneur Initiative of the foundation, which focuses on the college program. Prior to joining the foundation, she was a director at Omidya Network, where she led the education, skilling investments, as well as grants in India. She has been the founding partner at Kaizen Private Equity, India's only private equity fund focused on education. Our experience has spanned across strategy, investments, and operations over the past 28 years. She enjoys solving complex problems, especially in the early stage businesses where obvious solutions often lack. She is drawn to leading teams with a diverse skill sets which she has successfully done both as an entrepreneur and an investment professional. She has a passion for the impact investing in education and the future of work segments, financial services and emerging technologies. So uh, moving on uh, over to you, Monica, where you can explain to our participants what's all about Wadwani Foundation and the National Entrepreneurship Network. Absolutely. Thank you, Rupa. And uh, again, good evening, everyone. Those who joined right after I spoke, um, I'm going to take you all through a brief presentation about Wadwani Foundation. Um, so Wadwani Foundation broadly has about six or seven initiatives. Uh, the single-minded uh, mission of our foundation is to create high-value jobs at scale. Uh, we really want to ensure that we solve the problem of unemployment and unemployability in the country. Uh, and the National Entrepreneurship Network, which is what NEN stands for, is our absolute flagship program. So this is what we started with about 15 years ago when Vadvani Foundation first began its work in India. Uh, today, the National Entrepreneurship Network has really grown and we've spread our wings. We're not only in India, but we are in about 20 countries around the world. Um, and you know, our aim at Vadvani NEN is to empower students with the knowledge and skills that they would need to create high potential startups. And we really want to handhold them to succeed 
survive and you know to sustain themselves so i'm going to tell you a little bit more about vadwani foundation's mission before we deep dive into vadwani nen and at any point in time like i said if there are questions please feel free to put it in the chat box um, and rupa if you see that uh, because i have a full screen right now so if you see the chat box please do um, feel free to stop me and ask me questions i'm very happy to to uh, answer questions um, sure, monica again, like i mentioned the mission of the foundation um, everyone is accelerating economic development and economic uh, sorry an emerging economy through large scale job creation so all we want to focus on is job creation uh there are many ways to create jobs right i mean there is no one simple way to create jobs in any emerging economy and we happen to be in india mexico brazil um indonesia philippines nigeria kenya uganda south africa and like you can see all of these are young emerging economies that have great potential a very large workforce um and and you know large youth population just like we have here in india and we want to ensure that we really support these young students uh, who are in college and young entrepreneurs who already decided to be on that journey uh with um, you know not only their journeys but enable them to create jobs along the way so we help the unemployment problem in the country so um the way we create jobs is through entrepreneurship um innovation and skills development and we do that through the five initiatives that you see at the bottom of the slide uh we hope that by enabling uh young startups and entrepreneurs to create jobs we can change lives and when we think of changing a life we think of changing the life of a family right so through creating high value jobs and empowering individual to command those jobs and therefore hopefully give a livelihood not to just that individual person but to maybe a family of four uh and of course we want to scale this impact right i mean we don't want to be stuck with just being in a in a small part of india or in a small part of the world we want to ensure that we can spread ourselves in a way that we can multiply this impact we want to have the multiplier effect so we do this through technology programs uh we do this through our networks we do this through partnerships that we create across different continents in asia africa La latin america etc we have five different initiatives like you can see uh, at the bottom uh the first one is vadwani advantage and vadwani advantage is our small and medium size enterprise program sme program uh here we uh, actually support small and medium size businesses through a consulting model to um, you know address gap areas that they might have in their growth and therefore enable growth for them so that you know um uh, if they grew um you know maybe multifold we could enable job creation um, and and they could create jobs Uh, I'm going to skip Vadwani entrepreneur because that's what today's session is about, and I'll come back to that at the end. Uh, Vadwani, yeah, Monica, sorry to interrupt. Uh, have you shared the screen? We could not view the screen. Oh, oh, yes, I did. Um, let me um, go back and screen share again if I haven't. Can it be viewed now? No. Okay. Um. All right. Give me a moment. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Now we can view it. Now, yes. yes. Okay. Great. It's a first. Uh, first slide. slide. Um. I mean, that was just the introduction. Uh. What Badwani N E N is, and then this is the slide I was on, and I was trying to explain. So sorry that you have missed that, but these were the three top boxes that I talked about. You know, the creating jobs, us wanting to change lives, and us scaling our impact. Um, here are our initiatives at the bottom. So I talked about Vadwani and Advantage, which is our SME program, and the Vadwani Entrepreneur Program is the one that we are going to talk most about today. So I'll come back to that at the end. Uh, and we now have, uh, you know, Vadwani um, um, Opportunity. I'm going to just move this up here. um so that you all can see it vadwani opportunity is our skilling program and um through this uh, we partner with nsdc we partner with ncrt we partner with cbsc uh, these are programs which we help with young students with so 8th to 12th grade is our target segment and um, our intention is to skill them with 21st century skills so you could call that communication collaboration 
our critical thinking, these are important 21st century skills that we enable them to learn. Uh, along with that, we also teach them hard skills. So we have certain sectors in which we really teach them hard skills. This could be retail, it could be real estate, it could be different sectors that we uh, enable them to um, gain skills with so that they can you know, actually uh, become more employable therefore and get jobs. Uh, Vadwani Innovate is the next program here. And Vadwani Innovate really is uh, very similar to the SBIR program that they have in the US. And uh, what we do here is that there are a lot of innovations that often happen in universities and colleges in India. But very often they never see the light at the end of the day, right? In the sense that they, they, they have good innovations and research coming out of universities, but those never become real products that are out there in the market. So we give them grants uh, to young students and professors at universities that have interesting, innovative ideas so that they can actually make those ideas real by creating products and services that can be tested in the market. And finally, we have Vadwani AI. And Vadwani AI is a, you know, is a, is a partner program to Vadwani Foundation. Uh, the Artificial Intelligence uh, Institute uh, actually has um, artificial intelligence platforms. Those are platforms for social good. So, for example, we have a platform on agriculture where this artificial intelligence platform can enable um, farmers, uh, you know, uh, predict cotton crops, right, uh, as an example. Or it can help doctors for healthcare uh, predict the, uh, the um, potential of a child at a very young age developing tuberculosis. So these are the kind of artificial intelligence platforms that the AI team creates. Uh, which are artificial intelligence platforms for social good. So this is really just an overall and overarching, um, uh, you know, um, understanding of what Vadwani Foundation is, what we do, what we stand for. I'm going to now double down a little bit into Vadwani Entrepreneur, which is the second uh, bucket that you see here. And um, Vadwani Entrepreneur has um, three different pieces. Uh, the, we have an inspiring piece. Uh, we have uh, an education piece and then we have um, a startup piece, right? So um, we have inspirational events. Uh, we have a lot of uh, events that, you know, last year, of course, COVID changed all of that. But we had an event with uh, ET Now uh, where we were having a lot of startups come and, you know, um, uh, evangelize uh, their ideas through through various shows that we were having on TV, etc. So these are the kind of things we want to do to really enable young startups to showcase themselves. You get young students and young and the youth of India inspired to actually take up entrepreneurship as a journey. Uh, the, the real uh, mass of what we do is the actual educating piece, right, which is what I want to talk about most today. And we run our programs in entrepreneurship across hundreds of colleges in India, uh, but also in Southeast Asia and Latin America and in Africa. And uh, these programs, really, we have a very, very unique methodology that we use to disseminate these programs. Um, traditionally, these programs have been run in the classroom, uh, but given COVID and even, you know, just the nature of how uh, courses are disseminated today, we are actually moving to a more... Uh, online and a more digitized format. So what, what really is the core of our methodology? Uh, one is learning by doing. So our entire course, both the foundation program and the advanced program, we have two courses. Uh, both have a great deal of activities that make the core of this program, right? We want to make sure that students are working in teams. Uh, they, uh, they start with their ventures from day one and they always start their ventures as a team. So we never have a single student starting a venture. It's always in teams of three or four. And um, they learn by doing these activities, which are part of the course as they start their venture and they go along the journey of their venture. There's a lot of flipped classrooms. So there's video-based learning. And this is something we expect students to watch before they come to the classroom so that they already have some understanding of the concept that will be discussed uh, in the classroom by the faculty. And also we you know, use a, a lean startup methodology, which really uh, is an agile way of, you know, building something, testing it, learning from it, and then going back to reiterating based on what you might have seen come out uh, in terms of learnings, whether it's worked or it's not worked. And uh, like I said, every, event, every course, you start the course with starting a venture. So a venture is a part of the course from day one. It's, it's, you're not learning about entrepreneurship. You're actually starting a venture from day one. 
Um, so this is really how the methodology works. I'm going to stop here and check if there are any questions. Um, you know, happy to answer them. If you have anything, please put it in the chat box. Um, I'd like for this to be interactive. Um, and I'd love to hear, I mean, how many of y'all have taken entrepreneurship before as a course? So how many entrepreneurs do we have here uh, in the audience? Could you all raise your hand? Um, could I could I know Rupa? Yeah. Good evening. Okay. So participants, start typing your uh, responses in the chat box. We would love to see that. Yeah, I would love to hear and know. Um, you know, I'd love to know what's the profile of our crowd today. Uh, how many people do we have in the audience? Do you know, Rupa? Yeah, till now we have a live uh, attendees of 202. Right. And I'd love to know out of those 202, how many are um, actually entrepreneurs uh, or are you um, actually wanting to be an entrepreneur and you, you know, you're looking for inspiration or you may have an idea and you're thinking about how to make that idea into reality. I kind of want to know, like, uh, you know, um, how, how you are connected with entrepreneurship and, and where your journey is. So it would be very uh, eager to. So they, they started typing and Harshit said, hey, he's interested. Priya, yes. Many answers you are getting from VIT, Wells Institute, PSG Institute of Management. Yes, we would like to be an entrepreneur. Okay. Okay, come up. Just awesome. type your answers. So that's that's yes. great. And I, you know, I would I would be very keen to have you guys answer questions as I go along. So please feel free to type it in the chat box. And then, you know, Rupa, stop me at any point that you see an interesting question. And I'd be happy to, uh, you know, stop and answer so that... Um, it's, it's more interactive and engaging, right? But I'm going to move ahead. So yeah. uh, really, this is, you know, uh, a nutshell of how our programs work uh, for our students. Um, our target segment on the absolute left, uh, if you see, is aspiring student entrepreneurs. Um, existing student entrepreneurs at the idea stage. So you could either be someone who's a student and, you know, who's thinking about an idea and wants to be an entrepreneur but doesn't know how to go about it. Or you could already be a young student entrepreneur and you already have an idea. You've you know, kind of created a business model around it. You may even have your first couple of customers and you're wanting to go through a structured program which can really enable you to uh, you know, take your idea to, to a real venture. And we have both of those that come to us uh, um, you know, to, to get us to help them become entrepreneurs. Uh, we have three kinds of delivery models. Uh, our traditional model since the past 15 years has been D2F and that D2F is direct to faculty. So what really happens in direct to faculty is that we sign up with colleges. Colleges are our channel partners. Um, colleges um, uh, through their board of studies uh, get an approval to run our entrepreneurship courses. And we train faculty from colleges for our entrepreneurship programs. These faculty then go back and uh, run the entrepreneurship programs for student patches in their colleges. Um, and all of this, of course, is non-for-profit. We, we are a foundation and non-for-profit, so we do all of this for free. Our, our only intention is student outcomes and, and high impact, right? So there is no you know, commercial exchange between us and the college, uh, but we train faculty from colleges. So that's really the a traditional model where faculty come, go back to their colleges and teach in the classroom. Uh, the second delivery model is the direct to classroom. And in this particular model, we actually have our in-house faculty at Vadvani Foundation. They sit in studios. And of course, now with the COVID situation hitting us, they sit in the comfort of their home. And um, they relay these classes live to students uh, who are also sitting at home. So oftentimes, we now call our D2C, which is direct-to-classroom model, a direct-to-home or a D2H model because we find faculty and students both sitting at home right now. The course is the same. There is no difference except that students are scattered wherever they are or they might be in a classroom remotely located and our faculty is teaching from our studio or from their home. Uh, the direct to student model is where we want to change the faculty's role to that of a facilitator. And this is something we've been thinking about for the past seven to eight months. But when COVID hit us about four or five months ago, it really uh, made us made us even more um aware of the need for a direct to student program where you know we have the entire program delivered digitally and uh, which students can consume at a self-paced mode um, and faculty can just act as a facilitator in the learning process and in the entrepreneurial journey.
So those are our three delivery models. And really what you're seeing here is, uh, you know, how we go about it. So we normally start off with an orientation and a diagnostic tool. We want to make sure that you are set up for success. So not everyone is cut out to be an entrepreneur. There are certain attributes, certain skill sets, certain qualities you must have, you know, to be a successful entrepreneur. And then if you are, you are found to be, uh, you know, uh, having the right attributes or the right characteristics, you're put into either our foundation course or advanced course. Um, the foundation course is for those students who either may be aspiring to be entrepreneurs or may just have an idea. Advanced course is for someone that already has a minimum viable product and a business model set up and they want to actually advance in their journey of entrepreneurship, right? Uh, but the practice venture runs throughout our course. From the start of your foundation course, going all the way to the end of your uh, advanced course, we ensure that your starting of your course is a practice venture, but you get out of these two courses with a validated real venture, right? And we do have a WF, a Vadwani Foundation platform that supports you through all of it. So we have on-demand content. We have uh, uh, Connects is just our mentors. And we have an advisory life cycle. So we take you through a lot of advising through your journey with us, right? Uh, there's a lot of 360 support that we give as well. And, uh, you know, at the end of all of that, we are hoping that we come up with high-performing organizations, which are what we are calling hypos. And the practice venture really is your seat to entrepreneurship. Uh, and really the essence of our entire curriculum is around this practice venture, you know, all of the videos, activities, etc that i talked about and it lays a very clear roadmap for how you can create your venture from uh, you know the start going all the way up to um, a, a real venture uh, moving on uh, this is a little bit about the foundation course but i won't go too much into detail i'd rather leave time for questions so that if you all have more questions around each of these courses i can answer those questions but really this is the first of the two-part entrepreneurship curriculum that we have like i mentioned uh, we run it through colleges, around 125 colleges around India today, uh, but around 250-odd colleges around the world. Uh, it empowers early college students, you know, to either develop an entrepreneurial mindset or to actually create a venture, right? I mean, it, it serves both purposes. And uh, through the course, you know, students also, in, you know, kind of rediscover themselves. Uh, they understand what it would take if they chose entrepreneurship as an option uh, for their career, and, uh, you know, also kind of helps them identify new business opportunities that might exist out there, either locally in their own communities or out there, you know, globally in the world. Um, and then we also have a 360 degree world exposure that, you know, I will talk about a little later to help students outside of the classroom learning or outside of the basic curriculum that we have. Uh, moving on to the advanced course. Uh, this is the second part. Like I mentioned, there was the first part and then there's the second part. And uh, here, uh, you know, these are for senior college students. You should have done the foundation course to be able to do the advanced course. But if you are a young entrepreneur that is already far ahead in your journey, we also take students at lateral entries into our advanced course. Um, and again, we have a 360 degree real world exposure. Uh, we have milestones built in at various junctures of your entire, you know, venture journey so that we can keep checking in with you and we can keep supporting you at every point of the way. Uh, we also have in some colleges, we run something called the startup labs and think of this as an incubator in a college. And we run an advanced course through an incubator format so that, uh, you know, you can have a little bit more of a personalized handholding for our young startups uh, in colleges. Uh, and moving on, I wanted to talk a little bit about the 360 degree support that we give to our students. So aside from the foundation and advanced course that I talked about, we do a lot of open pitch days where you can come and actually learn how to pitch your product, learn how to pitch your startup um, to us. We can help you, you know, uh, improve. We can help you deliver your pitch better so that, you know, you're more ready uh, for funding when you actually want to, you know, uh, pitch to an investor. We have uh, demo days when, you know, real ventures come and actually, uh, you know, um, give us an understanding of who, who they are, what their idea is about, what their venture is about. We have uh, a jury of experts that come and then they, the, these ventures and students receive feedback and scores for their, uh, for their demonstrations, right? And then we have something called the open hours where our faculty is online available for students for doubt clearance, uh, for any kind of real-time feedback on their ventures, any questions they may have, any support that they might need. Uh, we also have a whole bunch of master classes, a lot of marquee industry experts that come. We had uh, Ganesh Krishnan come and talk to our students last semester. We had Ash Moria come and talk about, uh, you know, um, 
you know his methodology uh, and 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 we have uh, a lot of young experts who are wanting to come and share their experiences with students so that students can learn both from their failures as well as their successes because failures are equally important um and last but not the least we have the open house right where we call industry experts or functional experts uh onto a webinar like this one that we have and, and they you know provide students with their real time uh, and and the lifetime understanding of of particular subjects students get a chance to ask questions and and be more and more interactive yeah monica just uh, i have a uh, one question sure. do you think we need to integrate um, entrepreneurship curriculum across higher education and school uh, ecosystem apart from having them as an optional modules or labs uh well i'm going to answer the question in in two ways uh, rupa it's a great question um i think that entrepreneurship is the need of the hour because entrepreneurship teaches you not only entrepreneurship but it teaches you innovation it teaches you to think out of the box it helps you to really redefine your thinking about various things right it helps you to think about what are the problems that society faces that you can actually um actually solve for so in many ways i think it is something that almost every student should do uh however in our case we've tried to offer it um very often as an elective course because entrepreneurship like i said earlier we do have a filter test and or the diagnostic test and it's not for everyone right i mean you have to have certain attributes certain characteristics which are truly important for for being an entrepreneur change is something you should be very comfortable with you need to be an agile thinker uh you need to be able to uh you know work really hard because in your initial days it's a lot of hard work to set up a young company um and you need to be able to you know go through the grind and and keep yourself motivated over a period of time hmm. so um while i think that colleges should offer it i don't know if entrepreneurship is for everyone so all colleges should offer it but perhaps offer it as an elective so that students can choose whether that's a journey that they want to undertake or not okay yeah um so this really then is you know our 360 degree solution it it actually en encapsulates and captures everything i talked about uh we the only thing i haven't spoken about is on the top you know um left hand side that you can see which is our app uh we have an app outside of the tech platform that we have an lms solution which has our courses that students use in colleges but aside from that we have an app and this app helps you to connect with mentors helps you to go through certain um certain content in the in that we have not only videos but we have templates we have checklists we have you know a blogs we have articles a lot of different things that you know an entrepreneur can use as tools to really enhance his or her knowledge as well as you know help them along their journey so that's that's uh, the rest of it is all stuff that i've talked about so i i don't want to repeat myself but this is really how our overall course structure looks like and hopefully then all of that can lead to us inspiring students to create high potential startups uh because of the covid-19 uh you know response that you know like just like everyone else in, has been struggling with and and we struggled with uh we realized that you know the d2s program the direct to student program is something we should really uh, work on and uh, you know not only are we developing a course which is going to be piloted in fact in the next one month um to uh, uh, you know to a bunch of students uh, both in high school as well as you know college students um to see how they take to a completely digital program but we are going to want to focus on new age industries you know like tra travel and tourism has taken a hit food and beverage non essential retail all of this has taken a hit but at the same time there is a you know opportunity in every challenge so we have now additive manufacturing you've got tele services like health education finance uh, mental health guidance and counseling blockchain logistics and a lot of other opportunities that have come up so we want to support our entrepreneurs in coming up with ideas that are more new age that that uh, because of covid-19 has given you know given a rise to a lot of new opportunities and kind of harness those opportunities their entrepreneurship goals um and uh, you know we wanted to do this through a direct to student model so we we are hoping to to launch it in a in a month and see how that that works um and this is really the way the uh, you know the entire direct to student model will work so we are going to have two programs the activate program is for young students who are in high school and early college and then the ignite program is for college seniors and even budding entrepreneurs who already maybe graduated but just started on their journey and uh, again you know the highlights are we're going to be learning by working on the venture itself 
there's going to be a lot of case study based method of learning and peer to peer learning with your you know um classmates um you know we are going to ensure that you've got early customer and revenue growth uh, through a lot of interventions and we're going to have jury members coming externally to actually validate your venture and kind of give you external feedback to see whether things are working and whether you should change things or they're going in the right direction and then of course for those that do really well we have a whole bunch of rewards certifications perks benefits we've tied up with aws rupay uh, you know raise pay so there's a lot of uh, different tie ups that we have that and incubators and accelerators that can take you on board and give you funding and and we have a whole bunch of vcs and funders as well so all of this comes together then with the 360 and you know we we ensure that we support you in your entire journey so it's a continuum from the day you start your idea going all the way up to you know getting absorbed by an incubator and and that's how we plan for this program going forward um so really this is in a nutshell a lot about our program and uh, this final slide is just about our ecosystem and impact what we do we you know we have corporate challenges so you see corporates there i mentioned we work with educational institutes and and that's been our journey for the past 15 years uh, we work closely with governments for policy advocacy towards entrepreneurship becoming critically important and really having a strong startup culture in the country uh we work with a lot of mentors to bring them on board so that they can support our students along the way uh you know and uh, we bring in industry experts like i mentioned through our 360 degree uh, master classes and webinars that we have uh we work hand in hand with investors to ensure that they you know look at our startups as potential ones for their funding um and uh, we also work with industry associations and ngos from time to time where where it is relevant uh and you know really for us like i said uh, just to end um this piece before i start taking questions is we just want to enhance job opportunities uh, we really want to support students to establish ventures and you know develop and you know new ideas and just just enable them to innovate and create an entrepreneurial mindset and, and skills for themselves and that's what our journey is and and i'm inviting you guys to you know come along that journey with us uh and i think the country today really needs uh, young entrepreneurs to take on the the challenge of of creating new jobs so that you know our our unemployment um, is is not as high as it is so that's where i will end thank you uh, for listening so patiently and i will uh, i will let rupa lead with some questions i'm sure there are some questions that students want to um, ask yeah you can just uh, stop sharing so that yeah, yeah. thanks a lot uh, monica i think it's a very uh, informative session and the slides are very informative and moving ahead i have few a set of questions and we would like to uh, have a lovely conversation around them yeah so do you think monica uh, how important are industry 4.0 skills and how industry and academia should work together in driving these skills across students so um let me start by saying that i think there is a huge gap right between industry and academia i think that um what academia is churning out in terms of graduates uh, mm. there is a huge gap between the skills they have and the skills that are required by uh, corporates that are absorbing young graduates and and what their expectation is of these graduates right mm. uh, i think in the future of work and the changing workplace uh, there are skills that are critically important outside of the the hardcore skills that you might have so if you're an engineer or if you might be a pharmacy student or you might be a um i don't know and and art students graduating with psychology um i think beyond the subject matter expertise that you have a uh, collaboration like i was mentioning earlier that we teach through our skills program uh, critical thinking um communication uh, these are important skills to have so that you know you can work in teams so that you can problem solve um so that you can really think out of the box and innovate right uh, and i think that it is time that we looked at our curriculum in colleges a little more holistically so we are not only thinking about hard core skills that we teach um it could yeah. be finance if you if it's a management course but we yeah. need to teach them real life skills that are going to enable them um to to be successful in industry in the future and uh, i i think we're far away from it yet i know that there are a few colleges that are forward looking and thinking ahead and are doing that but i would say that's that's very few very few uh, in the country yeah that's great so let's moving at for the next question 
uh, do you think the industry will recognize online courses and certifications because i could see during the covid times a lot of students are opting for mooc centric courses especially in this uh, pandemic time do you think uh, they will recognize this the industry uh i'm going to answer that question in two parts the first thing i'm going to say is for example google hmm. 14% 14 14% of all employees at google have never attended college hmm. right so hmm. there are a lot of forward thinking companies who do not believe that you need to have a college degree necessarily to to get employed right it's all about hmm. having the right attitude mindset and skills hmm. um so therefore you may not ever attend college but if you're a really great coder i i guess a google or a amazon might hire you because that's what they want right on hmm. another note because of covid and even before covid there is was a huge trend of students um uh, graduating and not taking up full time jobs but really we are moving into the gig economy right and in the gig economy i mean these are short term projects that you might take up and you might work part time at maybe two or three or four different places and what those people really want is not to know whether you have a degree but yeah. do you have the right skill set so somebody who has digital marketing skill sets might be working for three four companies and using his or her digital marketing skill sets to support them in their social media digital marketing plan right um mm -hmm. i don't think they're ever asked about whether they have a degree in digital marketing really they've got to show the kind of work they've done in their past and if they've really done good quality work people want to you know uh, bring them on board so to answer your question i think that you know going into the future um i think a lot of corporates will not really care whether you have just a certification or a degree they will really want to see whether you have two skill sets that can really um, add value to them okay moving on to the next question you have a lot of experience in fundraising so how do students approach this can you speak about uh, national entrepreneurship network early stage funding program yeah so we don't have just a funding program rupa our funding is a part of the overall program so if you join mm -hmm. our program and i saw some students asking uh, on the chat box uh, do we charge no we don't charge right we are a we are a foundation it's all for free and students can come and join our programs so mm -hmm. if they join our program the funding is a part of what we do as as the hand holding we do when we we are teaching them the course right mm -hmm. they can't come to us just for the funding piece but having said that i think there are two or three important things that funders look for in a young startup and that is something i think students must um remember and always keep at the back of their mind right so i think the first thing is the team uh, at least mm -hmm. as a founder for the 9 years that i was an investor i always was very very curious to know who the team members are right whether it's one two or three founders or co-founders Mm -hmm. um i want to know whether they have complementary skill sets i want to know what their background is i want to know how agile they are in their thinking i want to know whether they uh, they're the kind of people that you know if the business is not doing according to their expectations will they pivot quickly and be able to make the most of new opportunities that are coming their way so i think team is is the number one thing before they go to investors they must make sure that they they have a very good solid team because i think the team is 50 to 60% of your job than a strong team. Uh the second mm. thing I always look for is the market opportunity, right? I mean, you have a product, is there a market opportunity for the product that you've decided to come up with or a service that you've decided to come up with? Because often times it's a great idea or a great product, but unfortunately there isn't a market for it and the uh, the, the second piece to that same point is a need to have versus a nice to have, right? Um mm. and articulating that very very well because I might have something um, as a product that's really nice, but I, it's not necessary for me to buy it. I mean, it's a nice to have; it's not a need to have. So the minute you have a need to have product, it makes it just that much more exciting for somebody to buy, or that much more of a need for somebody to buy. And and it's also how well you you know communicate what your therefore to the market what your unique unique selling proposition is. So to highlight that, say for example, when Uber first decided to get to the market. it had three things that it said right i never you will never need to own a wallet you will never need to own a car you will hmm. never need directions to where you want to go hmm. Hmm. so you are very very clear to your customer what is it that you are giving them in terms of the the offering right and hmm. is hmm. there a market opportunity for that hmm. and third i think uh you know um 
if you can bootstrap and you can for a small amount of money really show some amount of customer traction some amount of revenue generation then it is contingent upon funders to say well here is a team that has thought through the product that has some initial traction and we really want to back them i mean those are the things i would say you know uh, funders would look for uh, in young young startups yeah i'm happy to tell you uh, uh, one thing in the community dashboard monica i could view more than 150 plus likes for this session till now yeah. thank you so much yeah moving on to the next question monica what are the emerging technologies uh, you think uh, should students could look upon in building up of their career or building up of their startup so to me personally unless it's a deep tech startup um i would say technology is an enabler right i mean mm. in the current situation and the times we live in technology is an enabler so earlier you could have had a, a a health startup where you may have had physical clinics now you have a health tech startup and you're moving you know um, to a technology enabled startup uh, you may have had an education startup and now you're moving to ed tech and you know there are a lot of large ed tech companies that you're seeing grow today uh, you mm. may have a company that dealt with agriculture before and now you have agri tech right so mm -hmm. to me personally tech is only an enabler but what right. i think is important again going back to my earlier conversation around um you know having two or three co-founders that have really good skill sets i i believe that if you really want to have a tech enabled startup at least one person amongst your founding team needs to be the hacker i mean i call that person a hacker because that person is very well versed with new new age technologies with artificial intelligence with machine learning because hmm. a lot of our um, young startups today are data driven right i mean you need yeah. to be data and for data mining to happen you need to be strongly focused on you know artificial intelligence and machine learning so that it's giving you the data that you need and it's helping you personalize your product or service for your customer so hmm. i think hmm. that uh, those are the kind of technologies but i think that there's one person in the founding team that has to be that hacker who really hmm. understands technology deeply um hmm. and the rest of them have to have other skill sets right because technology is not enough like i said it's only an enabler somebody That's must true. understand what you know sales and marketing is uh, hmm. and how branding works digital hmm. marketing especially in today's time uh, somebody's got to figure out operations how to you know run efficient operations so i think because i've seen a lot of companies where the founders are all techies they do a great job of creating a product they are in love with their product they are product people but then they are unable to sell they are unable to to move along so i think technology is as important as having the other skills that you need to have as as young startups yeah. okay moving further monica tell me would you like to highlight on english employability and entrepreneurship modules developed by wadwani foundation and how is it relevant to college or school to adopt we have many teachers the faculties in our live talk show and it would be so interesting for them to hear about these modules sure absolutely so uh, the english modules are not a part of the nen program because like i had shown in my earlier slide shows for those that might not have been been there at the time wadwani hmm. opportunity is our skilling program where hmm. we got very very um, strong modules that can enable you to be proficient in english Hmm. and uh, for those colleges or students that really want to avail of our skilling program uh, i'm very happy rupa to to uh, you know give you contact information for our badwani opportunity team and they can enable them to get on to our skilling platform which is called jobs wise hmm. right hmm. the hmm. platform that we run for national entrepreneurship network it's called learn wise so hmm. this is more about learning entrepreneurship modules uh, everything we do at badwani foundation is for free Uh, there are no charges colleges can reach out to us um uh, i am happy to you know put in my email id here which i'm going to do right away and all college uh, faculty as well as um uh, you know uh, administration uh, i mean whoever whoever it is from colleges or students can write to me directly and i am happy to work with them to set up this program in their college so entrepreneurship modules can are run for free in all colleges we do not charge for it there are no fees all we require is for them to sign an mou with us and to show us interest um, in our programs okay so our audience would like to know whether there are any diversity centric engagements at wadwani to Sorry, drive engagements diversity 
diversity okay. centric engagements at Wadwani to drive women entrepreneurship. Do you have any partnership with organizations like, you know, Girls Who Code, Anita Borg Institute in promoting these initiatives? No, so currently we don't have partnerships with others, but very recently we enabled um, NSDC had come to us and the government of India and Startup India wanted to wanted us to train about 30 women entrepreneurs. And these mm -hmm. were women entrepreneurs from rural India who were doing home based businesses, you know, and we mm -hmm. did enable them to um, uh, to run a program uh, mm -hmm. for nine weeks where we trained uh, women, um, women entrepreneurs who were in rural India uh, to really understand how they can succeed and grow their businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think going into the future, that is something that's an area that we would really like to focus on because I do believe in gender diversity immensely and I would love to see that happen. We also do have something called the Vadwani Catalyst Fund, which is a small $25 million fund that we have set up to, um, to invest in young startups that create jobs. And mm -hmm. one of the things we do there is we do a focus on funding those companies where either they are women led oftentimes, or also if they, um, they have programs that empower women. So those mm -hmm. are the different ways that we uh, enable uh, the gender diversity to be addressed. But uh, I don't think we do enough to be honest and we would like to do a lot more. Okay. So uh, do you have any student ambassador programs at NEN chapters? And most of the large organization, you know, they focus on tier one campuses and ignore the rest. And how are you addressing this space from outreach to tier two and three campuses? So um, on the student ambassadors front, uh, hmm. we have um, uh, something called the startup clubs that we run, right? Hmm. Uh, hmm. Or e-cells, we call them e-cells or startup clubs. And these are run on a lot of campuses that we associate ourselves with. And we hmm. definitely have e-leaders or student ambassadors in those campuses. So we are in 125 campuses. So we have almost 120 to 150 campus ambassadors in these colleges, right? That we, hmm. we, uh, we are associated with. And hmm. uh, sorry, what was your second question? Uh, the second yeah. question, yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so no, we actually, we work with IITs, IMs, and we work with, tier B and C colleges and we work with large cities and we work with small cities. So we are in Raipur. I mean, we are in all sorts of small and large cities as well as in, in tier one and tier two and three colleges. So we don't uh, differentiate. What we really want is a faculty member and a college, um, you know, um, administrator that's genuinely passionate about setting up our programs. We don't mm -hmm. differentiate. In fact, we would love to. I actually feel that, you know, in our rural parts, uh, semi-urban and semi-rural parts of India, uh, there are students who are very enthusiastic. And oftentimes they don't get the opportunity, uh, you know, to, to bring their real ideas to life. So we would mm -hmm. love to, to address those. And I, and I absolutely, we don't stick with tier one cities. Okay. As Rajan Anandan, ex-Google India had used to say, you know, most of the Indian startups, are focused on 100 million audience. Do you think it's a time, especially in the COVID-19 times, to focus on building startups and aimed at touching billion lives? Do you think that? Yes, I absolutely think so. I think that, uh, you know, um, a lot of India is online today. I don't know if 1.3 billion people are online, but I definitely think seven to 800 million people are online. And I mm -hmm. think that... Um, COVID has forced everyone to go online for almost all of their needs, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And I've heard people talking about having doctor appointments online. I've heard about people, you know, obviously kids are learning online. I've heard about farmers getting help online for their, I mean, whatever you want to do is, is happening online. So I think that young students and they're digital natives, right? I mean, the young kids today uh, who are between the ages of 18 and 25, um, anything digital comes very naturally to them. I mean, technology is just second nature to them. So I think they should absolutely make use of it and, and ensure that they target the seven to 800 million population. Uh, and, and I mean, we have a country where we, we have the youth dividend, right? I mean, we have such a young country and all of these young, young people are, are online. And I think it's a price sensitive market, but you can find almost everyone online. If you have hmm. something worthy of, uh, of, 
a product or a service that's worthy of selling. Okay, Monica. Moving further, a lot of the students have a tendency to get afraid of the failure. It's a natural tendency of most of the students. Your advice to address this, especially for the students who have dreams of building the startups. So, guys, I was an entrepreneur, uh, and I can only tell you from my own experience. I started in two thousand when I came back after my MBA from the US, and uh, I just decided because I loved my experience in the US. I totally enjoyed. those two years of gaining my mba and it was very different from the experience i had of studying in bombay um at a bcom college uh, sydney you know it it was just a very traditional bcom degree hmm. and when i came back all i knew is that i wanted to make a difference in the space of education i had no background in education or teaching or running a company and i started with nothing but 5000 rupees in my pocket right uh and i grew that company and I, and and in 2009 when i sold that company and moved over to private equity uh that uh, that company was was at, at that time uh having a revenue of about 5 to 6 crores um though during those 9 years i failed several times and um i think there were two things that i can say one is i learned a lot more from those failures than my successes and i look back fondly at those failures because they taught me so many things which helped me to succeed uh and secondly and equally importantly every single time that i failed or i didn't do as well as i expected i would pick myself up and go out again and fight you know and i think those are the things that really when you look back um i mean we're now in 2020 so i'm talking about 2000 to 2009 hmm. those are those are exciting times you know and you learn so much from them so i would say that you learn more from failure so you should allow yourself to fail and not feel bad about it and uh, you should pick up, pick yourself up every time you fail and and just um learn from it and and not repeat those mistakes it's well said uh, monica do you think the next decade belongs to tcs ya infosys or hcl or a paytm ola or flipkart your view on service based companies versus startups in driving the workforce development Yeah, I think TCS emphasis and all will always exist. But if you ask me, what are the new age opportunities for young kids who want to get into entrepreneurship? Mm-hmm. I would say um, it's all the new age stuff, right? Uh, like I was saying earlier, logistics, education, technology, um, uh, agri tech, um, uh, health tech. I mean, all of these are you know um, uh, young. Uh, young upcoming industries and 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 it, they, they are still ripe for innovation i don't think we've hit uh, hit maturity yet right and and i think that uh, all of these industries lend themselves to a lot of innovation so i think yeah. that um, there is so much dis- disruption that can still happen in the future that i i would urge students to look at careers in in these new age industries i mean um, i i don't think tcs or infosys will ever go away but i think that time period that we had for everybody who wanted to be a computer science engineer who wanted to you know go and work for these big four mm. or five it firms i mm. think that is changing i think what the new age uh, and the future of work requires are very different mm. skills is a very different mindset uh, mm. it's a lot of innovation uh, and entrepreneurial and entrepreneurial ability and i think that um, that's where young students should head Yeah, moving further, Monica. Does Vadwani have any programs to train faculty or teachers in academic institutions? So we don't have any academic institutions of our own. Uh, we do hmm. have some in-house teachers where, like I mentioned earlier, we run the direct to um, classroom program. Uh, hmm. But uh, most of the times, we we tie up with institutes who have their own faculty. We bring them down and train them. We were doing it physically before, but now with COVID. this year in fact we've done all of our training virtually as well so hmm. we don't have uh, our own colleges or institutions uh, we have faculty who relay classes online live or we train in faculty from other institution okay for a college supposed to set up uh, any an chapter or centers what are the requirements uh, required for that can you specify any so, space yes. in graph no, yes so we normally sign up an mou with them uh we hmm. ask them to get a senate approval for our course um hmm. especially if they want to run it as a credit program uh hmm. but if they don't want to run it as a credit program or they want to run it just as an elective course we are okay with that as well um hmm. we do have a certain amount of requirements uh 
just in terms of them giving us a faculty member for training just in terms of them ensuring that you know they will adhere to some of our teaching methods and norms um and uh, you know um helping us to support the students in every way we can right so those are the only requirements we have and they do have to pay for the faculty training earlier they used to send the faculty physically now the faculty training is live so online so it, it there is no cost attached with it but earlier they would pay for the faculty to fly down to bangalore to our head office and actually get trained uh, which which like i said now is all virtual and online so aside from that we expect nothing we expect them to have classroom students uh, and and uh, you know just support those students along the way uh, we do everything else okay so does nen has any partnership with the uh, global uh, accelerators like y combinator microsoft accelerator or amazon launchpad so we have another program called the venture fast track program where we tie up with incubators and accelerators and we have a structured program just like we have the foundation and advanced course i was talking about we mm. have a very structured program for incubators and accelerators and we have been funded by gates foundation to train 100 incubators and accelerators around india that have been funded by atal innovation mission hmm. so we have all of them in our networks uh, we don't own any of them but we support these accelerators and incubators in actually running structured programs for their startups and incubators <clears throat> moving to uh, the next question do you have any hackathons or innovation challenges apart from any and chapters to motivate students like imagine cup of microsoft or a mind challenge of ibm so we don't have hackathons but we do have what we call rb pitch battles where you know real ventures come and pitch uh, their various ventures and you know it's like a battle and at the end of it we have rewards and certifications so we have different um, other events and products that we run where we have startups pitching and and um, and 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 battling it out for the top few startups yes okay So Vadwani, you know, operates across twenty-five countries with a rich experience of transforming economies. Can you tell us the ways in which you are contributing to India, especially on the technology front and the policy level interventions? Sure. So on technology, I think I've mentioned earlier we have Vadwani AI, and uh, hmm. we are using artificial intelligence for social good in agriculture, in health, and potentially in the future in education as well. Um, and you had another question. um yeah i also question. asked to tell us the ways in which you are contributing on the policy level interventions so yes we have a vadwani policy group uh, which uh, works closely with the government and in fact we are starting a policy institute in the next one month and where uh, the prime minister has um, has agreed to have three of his representatives on that policy institute and three of our representatives which will uh, aggressively work on technology policy okay that's very right, great with the central government so we are highly inspired by your founder padma shri dr romesh wadwani his vision and execution can you share your experience of working with him and also his dream of transforming india yeah he's he's just awesome um it's been a year and a month now that i've been working at the foundation uh, hmm. i haven't seen someone who's 73 and who's so sharp Hmm. um i think uh, what i've learned from him is that the devil lies in the details he can go to the absolute minute detail of anything that you're talking to him about hmm. he is very very quick as a learner and he's always pushing us hard to think in an agile fashion and i think that's the best thing i've learned from him right we constantly changing every time we think of something we go to pilot it he wants to think about how we can do it better so he's always pushing us to think out of the box to think innovation and to think how to get better and i think that that really is the hallmark of of who romesh is and why he's so successful yeah that's the last question from our side monica you are the role model for all of us so our audience are excited to see your achievements educational qualifications and work you had been doing in transforming the nen chapters and empowering startups in india Can you share some success mantras with students and young professionals right now who have uh, participated in this session? Sure. I think the only thing I want to say is that you know, growing up in the time and age that I grew, um, people used to always talk about a career ladder, and people would plan for their careers in advance, and you know, have like a 
have a thought process that I'm going to work in this company and after three years, I'm going to try and apply to that company and I'll move from this level to the other level, etc. Hmm. Um, for me, it's been a, it's been a jungle gym, right? Uh, hmm. Jungle gym meaning I've just moved into different, uh, you know, different um, uh, positions, uh, different kind of um, industries, different kind of work that I've done and I've, I've tremendously enjoyed it and I think the only thing I would I would tell young students today is just be open right just be open be flexible um, be excited about what the future holds and you know and, and just take opportunities as they come your way like you don't have to plan so much in advance about what you're going to do next every time like sometimes you know life has a plan for you and as you go along some interesting opportunities come your way and um, and you should just embrace those and, and, and do your best. Yeah. Wonderful uh, response. I think that's uh, actually one of the success mantra for all the students and faculty, whoever are uh, viewing this. So that's coming to the audience questions. So first question by Shivani Roy from ITFI. What is the role of innovation in entrepreneurship? I think in the in the age and time we live in, it's it's extremely extremely important, right? Because, like I said earlier, you might have a product, and if you can't innovate and quickly pivot when, hmm. you, when you find that your product is not working, then you're doomed to fail, right? So hmm. innovation is constantly thinking out of the box, right? You have an hmm. idea, you go to market with it, you realize that it may not be working exactly how you thought about it, and you hmm. immediately start innovating again. So I think innovation is actually, you know, not even um, part of entrepreneurship. I think innovation is entrepreneurship, right? Mm -hmm. Or entrepreneurship is innovation because unless you can innovate today, uh, it's hard to be a successful entrepreneur continuously, right? Um, all of the top entrepreneurs that you see in the world, they, they constantly innovate and iterate. It's never the same product always. Okay. The next question is from Rahul Jain from ISB. What are the key factors to build a tech hub? The key factors to build a tech hub. Um, I mean, to be very honest, Rupa, I'm not a, I'm not a, um, a technology expert. Uh, hmm. I'm an entrepreneurship and a startup expert. Uh, hmm. But my sense is uh, having, you know, worked out of the Silicon Valley for a long time. I mean, my answer is based on that experience. Um, I would say that... Um, Academia and industry need to work very closely for that to happen, right? Hmm. Um, uh, the reason Silicon Valley or, or the Bay Area, is San Francisco is the way it is, is that all of the colleges and universities, that's what they churn out in terms of graduates. That's hmm. what happens when, you know, these graduates who are innovative and technology experts start their startups. They attract more funders, more people. And then hmm. overall, this becomes a technology hub, right? I mean, you see all of the top technology companies in the world and more specifically in the US, they all come from one particular area. So why is that the case? It's because they've mm. kind of worked together in industry and academia to really create a culture of technology and, and uh, an understanding of deep tech. Okay. Next question is from uh, Shruti from Irma. Ma'am, what, what do technology company executives and venture capitalists should understand about selecting and investing in the global technology centers? So, um, well, I can tell you what they, what they do understand. Um, I think that for most of them, unless it's a deep tech company, it's not so much about the technology because like I said earlier, again, most people in venture capital, unless they, they technology is what they're focused on, they are not technology experts, right? They are experts hmm. in investing. So what is their expertise? Their expertise is in identifying a unique team with a unique idea that is hmm. really going to grow big. Hmm. And so, again, like I mentioned before to me, technology is an enabler. Hmm. So as long as they see an idea which technology can be used to further enhance, then they'd be excited about the technology piece. But it's not the technology itself that they're really betting on, unless, like I said, it's a deep tech company. Otherwise, mm -hmm. if a health tech company, the, the unique piece is the health idea, not the tech idea, right? I mean, the, mm -hmm. the technology is only an enabler. So I would say that they would always um, look at that as an enabler. Okay. The next question is from Arun. 
from Wells Institute of Science and Technology and Advanced Studies. What are the top five trends, ma'am, in the Indian entrepreneurship sector for 2020? The top five trends. Trend, trend. Yeah. So like I mentioned earlier, I'm very, very bullish on health tech. I'm very bullish on ed tech. I'm very, very bullish on logistics. Um, I would uh, also... Um, Say I'm very, very bullish on uh, mental health and, and counseling and those kind of areas. Um, and um, and uh, all sorts of e-commerce, you know. Um, th those would be the ones that I would think would really do well. Okay. So the next question is from Ashwan Freddy from Lovely Professional University. How digital innovation are helping to tackle climate change and sustainable development? Um, again, I'm not an expert on climate change, uh, but I have in my past of Tars seen a lot of young uh, student startups that are trying to address the climate change issue. Um, a lot of them were not tech startups, but a lot of them have used technology very, very successfully to, um, to support the effort in, in you know, in, um, helping the environment and in addressing climate change. So I, I actually think that uh, people are doing very unique work in just, you know, and I was telling you about our artificial intelligence platform that actually can enable you to predict the cotton crop. So there are a lot of artificial intelligence platforms out there that, that are supporting climate change. Um, uh, I, I haven't seen too many startups in India yet, uh, but you know, out of our colleges, there are a lot of environmentally friendly startups that come out that are actually uh, doing the work they're doing so that they can they can support the environment. Okay. Next question is from uh, Pratyaksh Agrawal. What is the first thing, ma'am, we should consider while going for a startup? Um, again, same answer. I think you should be thinking about your team the first, right? Who's going to be the team? This team is going to stay with you forever. Um, as long as your startup exists, your team will exist. And I think who the co-founders are is probably the most critical piece because even if you have an idea, um, that idea doesn't work or that idea needs to be pivoted. If you've got a good, strong team, that'll really, uh, that'll really work. You will be able to pivot. You'll be able to change your idea. You'll be able to change the way you're thinking about it. So I feel that um, uh, a strong team is the most important. Hey, Rupa. Uh, yeah. It's only 8 or 7. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I do have a in another 7 or 8 minutes. So yeah, yeah, it's act actually done. Ask a couple of questions and then round it off, if that's okay. Yeah. The questions are done, uh, Monica. Okay, okay. okay. Now I just want to say that thank you so much, Ms. Monica Mehta, for your valuable time and inputs. So I believe our audience would have enjoyed this session a lot. You have anything to say? Uh, to the session or the audience no just thank you for being here thank you for spending valuable time on a saturday evening uh, and if you're here on a saturday evening that means entrepreneurship might really interest you because i'm sure a lot of young students may want to do many other things on a saturday evening uh, i enjoy thoroughly engaging and spending my time with all of you um, and i've given you my email uh, i'll put it on again if there are any questions or anything you want to address to me you're very welcome to do so uh, I also, on the other hand, want to thank, uh, you know, Rupa and uh, the India Spark team for putting this together. I think they're doing an amazing job. Uh, I mean, I think that the work that she's doing to, you know, ensure that um, young students or the youth of the country are actually, you know, gaining skills and getting employable um, such that, uh, you know, they can, they can have a better livelihood in the future. And that too, she's not only targeting the, the, uh, the, the, the metro cities, like what I understand from Rupa is that she's really targeting um, uh, students in, in semi-urban and semi-rural India. And, and I think that that's awesome because I often feel that they're the ones that have the most talent, but not the most opportunities, right? And, and therefore, that is awesome work. Uh, also, you're addressing gender diversity, Rupa. And I think between both of those things, you're doing an amazing, amazing job. And you always have our support at the National Entrepreneurship Network. So if there's anything we can ever do for your colleges, for India Spark, um, to really um, further this cause of employability, uh, entrepreneurship, and uh, skilling, um, always here to support. Keep doing Thanks. the fantastic work you do. 
and uh, thank you everyone for being on the thanks a lot thanks a lot for that monica i would also like to thank the participants from companies like infosys tcs hcl wipro honeywell amazon paytm flipkart byju shopper and foundations like ambuja icici reliance tech mahindra gates and clinton foundation we have the colleges like iit delhi iit kanpur iit karakpur SRM, NIT Suratkal, I am Lucknow, I am Indore, I am Kozikot, ISP Hyderabad and Mohali, Irma Anand, IMI Delhi, FMS Delhi, Excel RI, Great Lake Institute of Management, Symbiosis Institute of Business and Management, SP Jain Institute of Management, Narsi Monji Institute of Management and Studies, Four School of Management, MIT Business School, Mittal School of Business, Goa Institute of Management, Jagan Institute of Management, PSG Institute of Management, Institute for Technology and Management, KG Somaya Institute of Management and Studies, Lovely and universities like Nirma University, LPU, GD Goenka, NorthCap, IFPI, JCRC, Manav Rachna, Delgotia, and uh, JL Bajaj Group of Institutions, Graphic Era, KL University, Amrita Vishwa Vidya Peetam, Wales Institute of Science and Technology, Maharaja Agrasain College of uh, Engineering, Christ University, Nanda Engineering College, Pragati Engineering College, Jaipuria Institute of Management, Dr. B.C. Roy Engineering College, Siddha Ganga Institute of Technology, Srimati Shushila Devi Institute, IBS, Shanti Business School, Vigyan Institute of Information and Technology, the College of Engineering Pune, Maulana Abdul Kalam Azad University, GS Lohia Girls College, Heritage School, Eluru College of Engineering, Andhra University, JNTU Hyderabad, Vishweshwaraya Institute of Technology, Parul Institute of Engineering and Technology, Walchan Institute of Technology, Dialbagh Educational Institute, Institute hmm. of Technical Education, Siksha O Anusadan, Satavahani University, AVC College, SFR College for Women, SVMS College, Tirupati, Dr. MGR Janaki College of Arts and Science for Women, and Princeton Academy, SJBIT Bengaluru. So thank you everyone for your valuable time and active participation. We look forward to see you at our next session. Our next session is on 25th July, same time, with an another eminent speaker of the day. The session is Mr. Prashant Shukla, the Managing Director, Southeast Asia, Udemy. A San Francisco based, uh, you know, one of the largest online learning platform of the world. So look forward to see you at our next session. Until then, stay tuned. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Stay home. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Monica, once again. And thank you so much for the team of AMIT, Mr. Hello. Yeah. Thank you so much for the team of AMIT, Saheb, and Sabri. Thanks a lot, once again.